Well, welcome back. So it looks like uh, AWS Academy changed something again. So um, one of the main things I like to use uh, is not working. So let me actually start the lab and then we'll talk about uh, what it is. So um, I'm going to use the Learn Lab Associate Services. Uh, the reason why is because um, then it allows me to do uh, API calls as well, so I can do online forms. Uh, so that's why I sign up most of my students for. Uh, so we're going to do student view so that we can get into the lab and I'm going to get this lab started and then I'll talk about what we're doing today. Um, so I do run Linux, so sometimes things are a little different for me, but not really much. So I'm going to go ahead and start this lab. So uh, while it's starting, so uh, one of the main things I use uh, um, AWS Academy for is help, helping my students see what the possibilities are of um, doing things online. So with that, I uh, love to do serverless. And one of the serverless features that uh, I use is being able to host a web page um, through S3. Um, well, it just so happens that that changed. So with that change, it made it so that my students were unable to uh, do it without an extra step. So just figured I'd re-record re this video. Um, go ahead and do that extra step. So um, the lab does take a little while to start. So that's one of the things I strongly encourage people to go ahead and start it uh, as soon as as they get to class or even before. Um, these are open for several hours. Um, if you look like this, it's long live. Um, the, you can, the session will end, but data will stay there. EC2 instances do shut down. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it, it's for, uh, it looks like six hours. Um, and then you can even click start again and reset that. So um, this is a, a good lab to be able to play really in depth uh, with um, AWS. But hosting a web page won't take as long at all uh, once this gets started. So uh, the thing that changed is they put some type of a policy to make it harder to make stuff public. So uh, since it's harder to make stuff public, we'll re-record this video and take you through the extra step. So uh, there's actually multiple ways you can do it. Uh, we'll be doing it in the point and click way um, instead of writing our own bucket policy. I'm actually wondering if this has started. This happened to me um, happened to me in class. So let's just look. So coming back here, uh, I just wanted to refresh to see if this AWS has turned to green. Nope, it's still yellow. So it's still it's still starting. So it takes a little while sometimes. One of the cool things here is it does tell you how much you've used. Uh, as an instructor, I'm not going to show this because of how many students I have in this and in, in FERPA. I can actually see uh, how much people, uh, how much the individual students have used. So if I wanted to, every so often, I could check and reach out to someone and say, hey, you're going through your, your budget too fast. Uh, you're going to run out. Um, but I haven't really uh, had that happen except for in the machine learning class. Uh, with the machine learning class, I did have um, at least one student have issues with one lab that they tried many, many times because uh, they you boot up big instances in machine learning. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and wait for this to, oh, never mind. It's it's ready. Okay, so if you notice this changed a little bit, uh, there's a, a CLI that I could grab here that will allow me to use the command line interface to interact with PeopleSoft. Uh, there's also the, the keys. Uh, we're not going to use that. Um, and the, the URL, or we can just click here on AWS, and this should sign us in automatically. If you get an error when you click on this, it's probably because you didn't sign out last time, and make sure you, it should say sign out here, you sign out, then you can try and get back in. Um, it should say Volk Labs here. Uh, if it doesn't, then you're using your own account, which if you are using your own account, great, but that means you're using your credit card as well, and um, it's wonderful that AWS provides students with the ability to play and learn without having to uh, use their credit card. Um, so, uh, without being billed for it. So, this is cool. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use S3 
So you can get to it many ways. I mean, here it's recently visited. I could type S3 up here, or I could go to services. There's lots of different ways to get to this. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. S3, Simple Storage Service. And we're just going to use it to host a web page um, that we'll pull down from W3 Schools because I love W3 Schools. So uh, here we are um, at a bucket. We're going to create a bucket. This has to be a unique name. It's supposed to follow uh, DNS standards. So um, my web bucket. And this I often use for my IT 240 class, which is web design. So we'll go ahead and uh, choose that bucket. There's the region it's going to go into. You could change it, but we'll, we'll do that. By, oh, by the way, ACLs. If we change it here, I think we're going to um, not have to change it later. So this is the going from the recommended, uh, recommend, <laughs> the recommended uh, setting to uh, this setting. Uh, it allows you to be um, owned by other AWS accounts. Okay, so and then we're going to get rid of block all public access, and we're going to have to acknowledge that this can make it, things become public because we're creating a web page, so it can become public. Um, and I don't think there's any advanced settings, so we're going to go create that bucket. So the only thing that we did um, that I didn't do last time is change that little ACL rule. So now we're going to come in here to this web bucket. And I do like to go to, I think it's the bottom of properties. Uh, at the very bottom, there's this static website hosting. And you can click edit. And you can enable it. And this allows you to set like the index.html to be the default. You can set an error. And there's other rules you can put in here that we're not going to touch on. So as that's creating, I'm going to go out to W3 Schools. I like the responsive uh, page because I think you should do uh, web pages as mobile first. So we'll just grab this one. Try it yourself. Um, and this, if you, if you look, it will just allow us, in fact, we'll take this off. Well, nah. so we're going to go ahead and oops, we're going to go ahead and grab this HTML. Let's see, control A. Um, and we'll open up Notepad which for me is Zed. Nope. We'll open up a different notepad. Let's see. So just a little text editor. Um, doesn't matter what you create it in. I often create these in VI. Um, because that's the one I like because I'm I like to play with Linux. So um, we're going to go ahead and save this and I'm just going to save this as index.html. looks like I already have one. So we'll replace it because I don't know what the other one had. So this is just going to be a W3 schools page. So I'm going to close that. So this is what it should look like, and I'll show you why I like this uh, this responsive page. So coming back here, I'm going to come to objects, and then I have to um, I'm going to do this off the screen. Uh, go to my documents and find that index uh, .html. And I'm just going to drag it over. So you can see you can just drag and drop. Uh, you could find it as well, but dragging and dropping is fine. Uh, and then go to permissions, and we do want to grant public read access, and I understand. And then we upload it. And now I can come and I can actually find the URL. I, I could find the URL just by taking the bucket name, because it's just going to be the bucket name and the, the object. But uh, we're going to just copy this here. So you see here, Here's my web bucket for IT240. This is the bucket name that I created. And you can see S3 Amazon 
uh, aws.com and then it's called index.html because that's what we called it. So if we come up here and if all is right, it should work. There it is. So the reason why I like responsive is because as you make it smaller, you can see that it adjusts. Uh, so it'll be easier to be viewed on a web page. So there we go. We created a bucket. We made it public. We put a, uh, an item in it, and it's available out there on the web. So yeah, it's, it is HTTPS, but it's Amazon, uh, AWS.com. Uh, you can change this with Route 53, but not in... Um, so you can put your own name here, but not when using your um, AWS Academy account. So uh, that's something that you'd need a, a full account to do. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you.